play tough. Play tough, play big. When that soul come up out of that body, let's see you be big. If you don't live for God right now on this earth, don't expect to go and live with God afterward. Yeah. You got to show that right here. Why we see death? Death is a sign that let you know your life's not your own. Play tough. Play tough, play big. When that soul come up out of that body, let's see you be big. If you don't live for God right now on this earth, don't expect to go and live with God afterward. Yeah. You got to show that right here. Why we see death? Death is a sign that let you know your life's not your own. Play tough. Play tough, play big. When that soul come up out of that body, let's see you be big. All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. Before I start this lesson, I'm going to give about honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Baha Hashem, Rakakwadash. Once again, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Baha Hashem, Rakakwadash. All right, I want to give that honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that teach the truth. And Ruel, peace and citation to the hopeful let that scatter abroad. Man, as you've seen from the video, man, hey, if you don't live for God right now, don't expect to be with him on, um, let's see what he said. See you be big. If you don't live for God right now on this earth, don't expect to go and live with God afterward. Yeah. You got to show that right here. Why we see death? Death is a sign that let you know your life's not your own. Play tough. Play tough. Play big. When that soul come up out of that body, let's see you be big. Right. So, you know, hey, we all living in, you know, in our lives right now. But it's about what you're doing with your life. Right. So let's go to um, the scripture. Let's go to this scripture real quick. <clears throat> so this is First uh, Peter 2 and 16. It says, as free, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as a servant of the Yahweh Bashim Shad, man. Okay, so while we're in this life, you know, the Lord gave us liberty. The Lord gave us grace. And we're supposed to grow in the grace thereof. Let's actually grow that. Grow grace. All right. This is uh, 2 Peter 3 and 18. It says, but grow in grace. Okay. Our grace period is now. The Lord is looking at what you're doing with your time. All right. And really, the Lord is speaking to the men first. All right. The Israelite men, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. All right. What are you doing with your time? Are you using your time to get right with Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ? Or are you out there just messing around, man? You know, the uh dilly dad and dilly and daddling. Okay, not taking the Lord serious, not redeeming the time because the days are evil, seeing that we're getting closer to the latter end of, of this man's rulership, the so called white man. Okay? What are you doing with your time? It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, because the Lord, Yahweh Shah, is our only way out. If you're not growing in the grace, if you're not using your time wisely to build upon your relationship with the Lord, don't expect the Lord to help you when times get ugly. Right? It says, to him be glory both now and forever among. So let's go back to First Peter 2 and 16. As free, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, right? A cloak to do evil, okay? Don't use your liberty to go off and go e and do evil, man. But it says, but as a servant of Yahweh Bashim Shai, we're supposed to use our time period to get right with our Lord. But see, our people don't use that time wisely. So when you go to... Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, all right, and put not off from day to day, okay? That's what Jake do. They put off from day to day. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll wait until last minute. That's why nobody knows the time nor hour that Yahweh Shai is going to come back and make his appearance, but Yahweh, because if Jake knew, 
they will they will um do all their sins, all their iniquity until the last minute and then try to repent. The Lord is not dealing with that. The Lord is saying who you want to be now. Are you willing to put everything off to gain Yahweh Shai, to gain the knowledge, to gain the wisdom, to gain the understanding? Okay? Because people say they believe in, in God and the Lord and they're willing to do anything for them, etc. But, you know, the Lord is not really looking for words. The Lord is looking at your action. The Lord is not looking at your outward appearance, but your inward. Okay? It says, For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance, because the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. The Lord is not, the, uh, the Lord, Yahweh is not coming you know, as hugs and kisses, the Lord is coming with death and destruction. All right, to to judge. All right, let's get this. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes three and sixteen. It says, and moreover, I saw under the sun, the place of judgment. What's under the sun? The earth. So when we come back, you know, on this earth, it's to play out our judgment. Okay. To, to fill up our lots. Okay. And best believe, if you're not on the right side of the Lord, you're going to get judged, man. See, that's why we have to remain humble, uh, gain fear in Yahweh Shai. Because we don't want to get judged, bro. Yes, now we do get judged on a daily from our sins, okay? And if you come to serve the Lord, you got to prepare yourself for temptation. You are going to go through different things. But you see these other people that are dying and they come out looking crazy. It's because they because of what they did in their past life. See, the earth is the place of judgment. It says that wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness, and it says, and that iniquity was there. So let's go back to this video right here. See you be big. If you don't live for God right now on this earth, don't expect to go and live with God afterward. Yeah. You got to show that right here. Why we see death? Death is a sign that let you know your life's not your own. Play tough. Play tough. Play big. When that soul come up out of that body, let's see you be big. Right. And he's right. You know, Jake is full of fucking pride, bro. Let's get this. All right, it says Proverbs 16 and 18. Pride goeth, it says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall, man. Look, bro, the Lord is not dealing with fucking pride. If a nigga got pride, you're going to fucking suffer for it, bro. You could play big if you want. Like the, uh, like the J said, you could play big. You could play like you big time right now. But when your soul leave your body and you in front of Yahweh Shai, you're not going to play big. You're not going to boast. You're not going to be like you big time. Okay? Let's see this. Let's, let's get some scriptures on pride, bro. Because the Lord not dealing with that. Um, Proverbs 8 and 13, it says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. Does not Jake do that? Jake be arrogant as hell and pride. Okay? Real prideful. They act like nothing can happen to them. That's why um the scripture says, um, let's actually hold on for this. Um let's see this. Let's get this scripture. Let's see if I can find it. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully and sent to them to do evil. Right? So they're full of pride and arrogancy. They feel like nothing can happen to them. Nothing can touch them. That's why Jake got pride. But see, the Lord is just tabbing up your sins. And if you're not coming to serve Yahweh Shai, you know, and put off all those things, the Lord is going to destroy you. Okay? So let's go back to the Prize, some prize scriptures. 
because in Proverbs, um, there's a couple I want to touch upon. All right, so Proverbs 14 and 3, it says, In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. Right. Full of full of pride, man. It says, But the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Right? The uh, Ooh, Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Right? The first shall, shall become last, and the last shall become first. All right, a man's pride is gonna bring him down. That's why when you see like, uh, for instance, you see like uh, boxers and athletes when they're full of pride, they end up losing. They end up boasting, they end up losing because they were too prideful. But the humble end up being winner, a winner, of being up up top, and that represents us as Israelites, man. We're humble, man. We at the low point, but see Esau. He's prideful, but now that could, that could go for our people as well because they're full of pride. Guess what? They're going to be brought low, two-thirds. They're going to be brought low. But see, the humble in spirit, the elect, is going to be risen up. See, because the Lord is only coming back for the elect. Let's get Matthew 24. And, and 31. It says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of of heaven to the other. Okay, the Lord is coming back to save the elect. Okay, and you don't want to be that prideful guy that's sitting in front of Yahweh Shai, right? It says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai that everyone may receive the things done in his body. So imagine that, you know, everything you've done in your body, you think you just, oh, Lord could save me, man. The Lord Lord got me during the time of Jacob's trouble the whole time, which Jacob's trouble is the time of never before. It's going to be a time of evil, chaos, destruction, uh, tribulation, famine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Okay, it's a time that you can never even fathom around your mind. All right, but Second Corinthians five and ten it says, "For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body." So, what are you doing with your time, your grace period, your liberty? Are you are you messing around? Okay, are you getting right with the Lord, man? Sincere, the Lord's looking for the sincere. It says, "According to that he have done, whether it be good or bad." Or imagine that. You full of pride, all right. You could you could play tough, all right, until the soul until your soul leave your body, and you in front of Yahweh Shai, and the Yahweh Shai just reading out everything you done. You gonna be looking sick, bro, sick, because you heard the prophets, all right. Let's go to Second Ezra eight, because this is what our people are doing right now. Um. Let's get this. Second Ezra 8 and 56. It says, For when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High. So imagine that. You got two-thirds of our people, which um, two-thirds of our people are going to die in the land of America. Let's actually pull it off on this. Let's go to uh, Zechariah 13 chapter. And the eighth verse, it says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land saith Yahweh, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. In what land? The land of America. Okay? The majority of the elect is in, is in America. All right? But two-thirds of our people, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, are going to die. Men, women, child. All right? It says, but the third shall be left therein. Only one-third is going to be saved. Imagine a remnant. Just like the days of Noah, the same thing is going to happen today. Nothing new under the sun. It says, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them and I will say, it is my people and they shall say, Yahweh is my power. <clears throat> all right, so the elect is going to be refined through that fire, through all that hell and all that tribulation. But guess what? They're always going to reverence the Lord Yahweh Shai. So 
Let's go back to Second Ezra 8 and 56. It says, For when they have taken liberty, they despise the Most High. Okay? They despise the Most High. Imagine that. We have, we have the grace period, the freedom. Okay? The Lord gave us freedom and liberty to... Um, to uh, really just to do his work. Let's see what you're actually going to do. Okay? But guess what? Only the elect is going to come back and take the Lord serious. Our people don't have the fear of the Lord, man. They don't fear the Lord's judgment, the way that he could take you out. All right? It says, from when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High, thought scorn of his law, and forsook his ways. Right, when the prophets are out there, they're out here telling you that, you know, eating crab, shrimp, lobster, etc. is is wrong. And we're telling you that the, the things are about to happen upon this earth. Guess what? They forsook it. They thought scorn of it. Oh, man, I can eat bacon. I can do this. Verse 57, moreover, they have trodden down his righteous, trodden down his prophets, right? And said in their heart, in their mind, that there is no God. Yeah, and that knowing they must die, okay? Guess what? They think that when you go to, and now when you go to Psalms 14, 14 and 1, it says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Really, our people are atheists, bro. Antichrist, okay? They're going to have to die. There's, there's no other way. All right, so now let's go to Daniel, the 12th chapter, and the second verse. Well, let's start with verse 1. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, right? Michael the archangel, right? Because when times get ugly, the Lord is going to send Michael the archangel. It says, the great prince will stand up for the children of thy people, the Israelites, and there shall be a time of trouble, Jacob's trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time is going to overdo everything that you have seen in your history books, right? And at that time, it says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, the elect, everyone that shall be found written in the book of life, right? Now, this is what's going to happen to the rest of them. Verse 2, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt, which is not forever. It's just a, a, a long duration of a time period where the two thirds are going to be in a shameful contempt state because they knew what they heard was the truth, but they despised it. But really, the Lord had them had them do that. OK, this is all the Lord's story. His, he's the director. He's the uh He's the one that directs everybody's steps. Okay. We want to be the ones of everlasting everlasting life. Let's get first fruits. Um right here. So this is Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. The lamb represents Yahweh Shai. It says, and, and with them, 144,000, right, the elect, 144,000, right, 12 from each tribe, 12,000 from each tribe. 12 times 12 equals 144. It says, having his father's name written in, her, in their foreheads. And you think about Ezekiel. Um, Ezekiel, was it, 6? No, not Ezekiel 6. Uh, Ezekiel, um, damn, what's that scripture? I think Ezekiel, yeah, Ezekiel 9. The water, Yahweh, Shem Yashai. All right, when you go to Ezekiel 9 and 4, it says, And, the, and Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. That word mark goes to Tawab. Meaning uh, uh, exemption. All right, the the Lord's elect is exempt from the judgments and the plagues that are about to happen upon the earth. They're going to be protected. They're going to be secured. Yes, they might go through hell, different tribulations, different things to um, 
exercise their faith. Okay, it's all part of the story. They may have to get beheaded or what, what, whatever, whatnot. But guess what? They're exempt from the judgments. All right, they have a a, a sign on their foreheads of the men that sign and cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst of the elect. Is the only ones that's doing that. So when you go to Revelation fourteen and one, it says. And with him, 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Right. We're going to have that exemption in our foreheads. The name of Yahweh Shem Shai. The angels are going to pass right by us when all the destruction goes goes past. And you think about it, you think of of Passover. Okay? When when the Israelites put the blood upon their, their stood posts, all right, they were exempt from all the destruction. All right, but the Lord is not coming to save all Israel. But it says on this side going around, verse 2, it says, And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of the harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne, right? New going into refresh, okay? It says, and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but 144,000. The elect is going to sing in that song now. That that pure song, that doctrine. Everything is true 100%. They're not off. They're not, they're not stirring away in the doctrine. We're all singing the same song. We're all on one accord. Okay? Hey, can two walk together yet to be agreed? You got a lot of false prophets out here, man. Okay, it says, and no man can learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth, all right, which was brought back. Okay, redeemed meaning brought back, right? It says, because they were, hey, they were saved from the destruction. Verse 4, it says, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins, um, where's the point I'm going to? Oh, right here. Okay, it says, These are they which follow the Lamb whatsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Yahweh Shah and to the Lamb, because the first fruits, the elect, is going to see the destruction. It's going to put these devils in chains and see the kingdom be brought up versus the two thirds that die off. They're going to come from the loins of the elect. All Israel is going to be saved, but there's only going to be an elect remnant that's going to be, um, all Israel is going to be saved, but it's only going to be our elect remnant that be saved in this time going, coming, coming to pass. All right. The rest of the two thirds that die in the destruction and, and whatnot, they're going to come from the, the loins of the elect. Okay. And we're going to repopulate all over again, man. So I'm gonna go back to this video. See you be big. If you don't live for God right now on this earth, don't expect to go and live with God afterward. Yeah. You got to show that right here. Why we see death? Death is a sign that let you know your life not your own. Play tough. Play tough. Play big. When that soul. Right, man. Which you know, it's a balance to what he's saying. Okay. Um, all Israel's gonna be saved at the end of the day, man. Okay. But he's really like the balance is that we have to do we have to work now. Do you wanna be you wanna have you wanna gain salvation? You wanna you wanna do the things that that please you how about you know, Shai? Do what he commanded you to do. All right. If you not, don't expect to be to be saved, bro. Okay? Faith without works is dead. When the Lord pull up when you in the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, the Lord pull up your works. You don't want to have empty blank works, man. You want to have something to file. You want to you want to show him that you've done something. The Lord sees everything. He knows what you're doing, you know, throughout your life. Okay, but it's about what you're doing now. Is it pleasing the Lord? Is it is it a good sacrifice? Okay, the Lord is not looking for people that are full of pride. They can't change their ways. You know, they're just stuck in their ways. <clears throat> All right, it's all about repenting and turning back to Yahweh Bashim Yahshua in truth and in sincerity, man. Okay? When all hell break loose, when all hell break loose, that's when it's going to be ball game. 
Mercy gates closed. Grace, grace period is over. Liberty is over. Now you got to exercise your faith. Okay? And Lord, when do we be the elect, bro? We want to have mercy. We want to we, we want to um obtain mercy from Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, man. All right, and we doing this thing with confidence. We doing this thing willing, like willingly that Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, Lord Baba Kashah, please save us, man. We stuck we stuck on his fucking this wicked ass niggas uh kingdom. Okay. We want we want the Lord to to see everything we done as good as pleasing to Him, okay. So you know with that you know Lord when this lesson been edifying. Um, Lord when this lesson, you know it's edifying to the viewers, man. Hey, it's about what you're doing now, what you're doing day to day, praying to Yahweh Bashimah Shai, doing His work, you know, and um, preaching His gospel, man. Okay. So with that, Lord, one of us has been edifying. We give our honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, Karkadash. Until next time, I say Shalom.